Okay, for some of us, we've been using tamarindo for years, generations, but it's having its time to shine. It's gonna have a breakout in 2024. Top selling maker of seasonings and spices, McCormick and Company predicts that the flavor will dominate menus next year. So if you don't know, the spice comes from a tree commonly grown throughout Mexico, Africa, Asia, India. Go for it. It's a tangy sweet flavor that can be added to potato chips, mm. ice cream, and even coffee mm. or fruit. McCormick says it chose the spice because it encompasses what it saw for this year. Tangy and sour foods modernize versions of regional foods and over the top takes on childhood favorites. Yeah, I mean, we've been doing, we've yeah. been using tamarindo in San Antonio for a long time. People are just finding out it's about everywhere. it. It's yeah. everywhere. Yeah, the secret is out. <laughs> Time now, 857, 66 degrees. Good morning, welcome back. Happy weekend. It is 9 a.m. It is Saturday, December 9th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us, starting Good your morning. weekend with us. Happy Saturday. We are back. So excited to be here. And it has been kind of chaotic to start the morning. Oh my gosh, Sarah, we had that dense fog throughout the morning, causing some chaos on the roadways. It's starting to clear up though. It is. We are starting to see sunshine in the hill country. So the clearing skies right on our doorstep. I want to start with a look at the pollen count today. No major change here. Molds and mountain cedar are the only allergens present and they are low. Here's a look at uh, 90 at couples right now. Earlier there was a bad crash at 90 eastbound at couples, but things have since cleared, but you can still see areas of fog and there are even areas of mist and drizzle. This is a look at the airport, a little bit of mist right now at the airport and temperatures are generally in the mid 60s, 65 in San Antonio, but it's already 70 in Seguin. What I want you to look at here is the visibility down to a quarter of a mile at the airport. So dense fog at the airport, but you look out toward Kerrville, visibility is vastly different and improving up to seven miles and it's a lot colder in Kerrville and in Bernie. That's because a front is moving through and you can see that it's clear up in the hill country. A little bit of fog in the valleys, but those that will fog will dissipate. We are going to be seeing sunshine very shortly here in San Antonio within the next 30 minutes to an hour as these clouds continue to push south and the fog starts to lift. So the morning fog fog will be clearing will be up to 77 degrees today for the high. It's going to still be a warm Saturday, but with that front moving through later on tonight, that's when we'll see wind gusts of up to 40 miles per hour. Make sure to secure those outdoor Christmas decorations today. That those are some gusty winds. Then by tomorrow, a cold morning at 41 and an afternoon high of only 60 degrees under sunny skies. So a chilly day tomorrow. Then by Monday morning, our first freeze of the season. I'll tell you what you need to prepare for with that first freeze coming up in just a bit. Max. Thank you, Sarah. The latest around the San Antonio former spur, Josh Primo. Remember, this was a case we followed very closely and a big update. Primo will not face indecent exposure charges after a former team psychologist accused him of doing that several times just last year. In a statement from the Bear County District Attorney's Office, they explained saying that there was insufficient evidence to prove the allegations. Now, they went on to say that their office must be able to prove each and every element of a criminal offense beyond a reasonable doubt. And they said, plain and simply, they don't have that evidence. In your morning headlines, an appeals court partially upheld the gag order against former President Donald Trump in his federal election subversion case. That panel ruled Trump can be barred from talking about witnesses or prosecutors. That gag order, however, does not apply to comments Trump makes about special counsel Jack Smith, which is different from the original order issued in the D.C. District Court. All right, and sticking with politics, Republican National Committee says GOP presidential candidates, well, they can take part in any debate they want to. Now, the RNC says it doesn't have to have a party-sponsored presidential debate scheduled for January, so candidates can participate in other ones if they'd like. Now, the decision comes after several candidates criticized the exclusivity pledge. ABC News set to host a debate in New Hampshire just days after the Iowa caucus. The NCAA says it wants to split the highest level of collegiate sports by dividing Tier 1 to directly compensate athletes. So NCAA President Charlie Baker says a split would also address disparities in school resources. 
He says colleges in the subdivision would work on new rules for the group and they'd have to provide funding for at least half their eligible athletes. If adopted, the new rules could have an impact on a wide range of policies from scholarships, transfers, and name, image, and likeness revenue. All right, new research from the research group Japan 101 revealed that the Houston Texans are the cheapest NFL team to support as a fan. Data shows that fans spend on average $380 for tickets, food, and merchandise at NRG Stadium. So what about our other professional football team here in the state of Texas? Well, the Cowboys placed 28 on the list. So <clears throat> Go just, to just to put that in perspective, <laughs> that means that they're the third most expensive team to support. So on average, we gave you the Texans average. On average, a fan for the Cowboys will spend $900 a game. And you're probably asking, hey, who is the most expensive team to be a fan of in the NFL? Well, the answer, the Raiders. With an average of $1,300 spent by their fans. And you have to consider, new stadium, just moved on to Vegas. So I guess I can understand it. But as a Cowboys fan, have you been to a Cowboys game recently? No, but I've, I've been to AT&T Stadium, stadium? Not cheap. Not cheap. Yeah, yeah. that's fair. Yeah. You know what? If but you it, wanna... it's worth it. You know, being a Cowboys fan, it's, it's, it's worth it. It's worth <laughs> it. It can be okay. difficult. All right. <laughs> well, next time we it. go to a Cowboys game, you can pay for it. Okay. Uh, time now, just about 9.06, 66 degrees. Well, have you seen butterflies flying around? Yes, I have several monarchs still munching on native pollinator flowers. Scientists are saying something different about the migration this year. We'll take a look. That's up next. And it has been wild weather to start the morning. That fog looking like it's starting to roll out a little bit. It was super dense to start the day. We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey what the rest of the day is going to look like. Okay, you've probably seen them year round, like clockwork, thousands of monarch butterflies. They fly up to 2,000 miles to Western Mexico from Canada. They stop here in San Antonio around between September and November to escape the winter, those chilly temps in Canada and the United States. In the past few years, fewer butterflies return, so scientists thought that meant that the population for monarchs was down. There's been a lot of studies on this. There's still debate going on in the science community, but a lot of the studies are showing that they're sticking around in residential area. So mm. I still have a lot of monarchs in my garden right now because I have a lot of blooms and I've seen probably the most this year. So it's insinuating that, hey, actually populations are okay. Maybe they're just not migrating as much because of climate change. Interesting. Uh, very interesting. Uh, speaking of something that would be interesting, wouldn't snow on Christmas Day be interesting? So it's funny because a lot but. of people out there, I'm not trying to put anyone on blast, but people have <laughs> sent out posts for clickbait saying that there's going to be snow on Christmas. Sarah, what are the chances of that happening here? Very, 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 very slim to none. Truth okay. speaker. So as we gear up for Christmas, I do want to just break down the actual chances of getting a white Christmas and snow on the ground in San Antonio. Check it out. Are you dreaming of a white Christmas in San Antonio in the Hill Country? Well, keep on dreaming. I hate to be a Grinch, but the odds of a white Christmas in San Antonio are only one in a thousand. Those odds are similar to if you went to the grocery store, picked up an egg and cracked it open and found two yolks. Not impossible, but just not very likely. But back in 2004, San Antonio came close. There was a lot of snowfall on Christmas morning for areas like Corpus Christi, Galveston, and Victoria, and even in the Valley. The Alamo City has never seen a white Christmas in its recorded history, but we still get plenty cold. In fact, just last year in 2022, we had our second coldest Christmas ever, when in the morning, the thermometer reached 22 degrees. But of course, it can also get plenty warm too. The hottest Christmas we've ever had, it got up to 90. So what does this Christmas have in store? Well, we still got to wait for that forecast. Make sure to follow your weather authority. We'll have your latest Christmas forecast details on air, online, and on our KSAT Weather Authority app. Merry Christmas, everyone. So Sarah Costa has been very lucky and has seen double yolks. Uh, I see it at least twice a year. And a lot of people who eat a lot of eggs do. Think about this, though. The, say, the the probability there, that would be like if you only got one egg a year and cracked it open okay, and got a double but yolk. but Max eats a lot of eggs. I eat a lot of eggs. And you've never... I've never had a double see, yolk. See, I thought that was I didn't weird. even know that was a thing. Yes. It is a thing. I get especially, so excited. I'm like, whoa, twins. Especially for younger hens. <laughs> twins. <laughs> Isn't that what it is? I'm not a scientist. <laughs> it is. All right. Let's let the scientists speak. So <laughs> 
We have got uh, some areas of fog and mist and drizzle out there right now at the airport. That's the camera that you're seeing here and the mist and drizzle is going to be very short lived. It's 65 degrees outside. Visibility is down to about half a mile, but the reason why the drizzle is going to be short lived is take a look at the clouds and temperatures. There's the clearing line. It is on our doorstep here in San Antonio. It's sunny in Rock Springs in 57. As we zoom in, we're starting to see some clearing enter into northwestern Bear County, so it's just a matter of time before the airport sees some sun too. It is humid out there. There's plenty of fog. We've had lots of crashes on the roads this morning, but a cold front will be moving through, sweeping out the humidity and eventually making it windy today. First, though, if you're headed out within the next hour, you will have to deal with that fog. Visibility down to a quarter of a mile at the airport, but you can see that visibility already improving in Kerrville. Visibility down to a mile at Port SA, down to a mile and a half in New Braunfels. So as we look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast, yes, fog and mist for the next hour or so, but we will be looking at clearing skies and a warm afternoon with low humidity. 77 for the afternoon high, so it is going to be a little on the warm side. We aren't going to feel the effects of that cold front until later on today. That's when winds are going to pick up. We'll have sustained winds at 20 to 25 miles per hour hour tonight with clear skies and temperatures dropping will already be in the 50s by 9 p.m. Let's go back to those winds and talk about the potential gusts of up to 40 miles per hour. That is strong enough to knock over any lightweight Christmas decorations. So take keep that in mind today. Take some time to secure those Christmas decorations that'll continue into the overnight hours and into early tomorrow morning. Early tomorrow morning, we'll have a few wind gusts of up to 30 miles per hour. It's going to be chilly in the morning too. We'll have temperatures right near 40 degrees, but with that wind from the north, it'll feel like it's in the 30s, a wind chill in the 30s. But by Sunday afternoon, winds will really start to die down and it'll be a nice day on Sunday. So here's a look at the temperature trend tomorrow morning, 41 and then 60 for the high. So a little on the cool side. Then by Monday morning, this is the next thing I want us to focus on. A light freeze is likely our first light freeze of the season in San Antonio, but I do not expect any wintry precipitation whatsoever. This is going to be a dry forecast for Monday, but there are many neighborhoods that will be seeing that first freeze for the first time this season. So Monday morning between about 3 a.m. and 7 a.m. That's when we expect the freeze down to 31 in Uvalde, 32 in Pleasanton, 32 in Kennedy, 31 in Gonzales. All locations around San Antonio and the Hill Country likely to get down to freezing at least for a couple of hours. It could be in the 20s though in the Hill Country, even colder in those high elevations. This is not the kind of cold that you need to worry about your pipes. It is not going to be getting that cold outside. However, sensitive vegetation should be considered to be brought inside. So here's my weekend weather to do list for you outside today. Make sure to secure those outdoor Christmas decorations, especially those inflatables, because again, it is going to get windy later on tonight. Then tomorrow I would prep for that light freeze early on Monday morning. That means bringing inside potted plants, tropical plants, covering up citrus plants and making sure to keep your pets warm. That is a big one. We do not want our pets to be cold outside. So just to reiterate, gusts up to 40 miles per hour tonight, a nice day tomorrow after a cold start. And then on Monday, that's when we expect that light freeze in the morning hours. Then the next thing to look forward to is rain possibility Wednesday through Friday. Coming up in the next half hour, we'll talk a little bit more about that rainfall potential, Sarah. Sarah, I have an update on the double yolks. My mom just texted mm. me. Okay. She said you have to get the jumbo eggs, and mm. that's why you always right. get the double yolks. I don't know. If that's gotcha. I, I buy jumbo eggs, so maybe that's why I get them. Well, my time. statistic yeah. was not for jumbo eggs. No. So Max, that was you just... buy jumbo eggs? No, I don't spend $8 on eggs. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Time now is just about 917, 66 degrees. We have some awesome people in San Antonio that we want to showcase. That's up next in our Saturday Spotlight. In our Saturday Spotlight over at a San Antonio, Professor of History Edward B. Westerman has received the International Book Prize for Holocaust Research. His book explores the role alcohol rituals played in the Holocaust, challenging misconceptions about Hitler's security force. University says an international panel of judges indicated 
that the book is a stellar contribution to the Holocaust and perpetrator studies. And a San Antonio teacher on a mission to boost math engagement and achievement among underserved students in our community, landing on Forbes 2024 30 under 30 list. Dash Young Saver, ironic last name because he's trying to save the youth, <laughs> a statistics teacher at Idea South Florida has received the national recognition for his work creating math lessons that are relevant and engaging. The magazine cited his nonprofit, Skew the Script, which provides free lesson plans that help instructors teach math in a way that matters to their students. Great job to both of these amazing local educators. Congratulations. Time now just about 921, 66 degrees. Still need to get the seniors in your life a gift. We'll qualify seniors Can for I the holidays. The we have some ideas. That's up next. Good morning and welcome back. Put you on the spot. Have you bought your holiday presents yet? I am almost done. Okay, so no. No, no I have. Okay, I, you've started. I, yeah, like I'm, okay. I'm, I think 60, 70% done. Okay. Yeah. It's a big difference between 60 and 70. <laughs> All right, it is the season of giving, but sometimes it is a struggle to find the perfect present for those in your life. Mandy Gaither has a gift list that can help brighten a senior's life even after the holidays. This holiday season, give the gift that keeps on giving to the seniors in your life. And so this is a great time of year to think about some of those opportunities that can help keep people living in their homes safely, give them a sense of independence. Orthopedic surgeon Carmen Quatman with the Ohio State University's Wexner Medical Center says for the traveling senior, think about accessories like a vehicle support handle to help them get in and out of a car safely or a lumbar support pillow to help with pain and stiffness. There's little pillows you can buy for camping that you can just put a couple of little puffs in, stick behind your back, put it under your legs for long car travel. Quadman says to help them stay hydrated with a personalized water bottle or for those who have hand tremors, weighted utensils and writing instruments can be a perfect present. But it can really help with some of those day to day activities that can be really frustrating. For the gadget loving senior, smart devices for the home can be helpful. Beyond music or making a quick order, they can be great for setting timers for medications. They can be great for helping someone who struggles to dial on their phone if they have arthritis or um, have different um, difficulties with technology. Finally, Quatman says a ride service gift card for Uber or Lyft can empower adults. Transportation um, is a key to feeling like you're mobile in your community. For Health Minute, I'm Mandy Gaither. In your morning medical minute, nearly one out of every six adults has trouble hearing and those numbers are developing hearing loss are actually growing fast. But a lot of people who could really use a hearing aid, they don't have one. Here's the good news. That could change. It is getting easier and easier to get a hearing aid and you can get them over the counter now. So on your sides, Marilyn Moritz has some recommendations what you should know before you buy. It's frustrating constantly asking, can you repeat that? An over-the-counter hearing aid may be the solution. It's easier and more affordable than ever. If you have mild to moderate hearing loss, you don't necessarily need to go see a doctor or an audiologist to get one. You can actually just go to the store or go online and buy a pair. So where do you start? First, know that there are two kinds, preset and self-fitting. Preset OTCs are more affordable and they're generally simpler to set up and use. You can just stick them in your ear and go. But some are so simple that they offer little more than basic volume control. Consumer Reports worked with an audiologist to test 10 OTC hearing aids. Things like volume, frequency range, distortion, battery drain, and directional amplification. Here's what they found. At $99, the Audion Hearing Atom was the most affordable preset model they tested. But the only thing you can customize is the volume control. And that requires a tiny screwdriver. CR also found Found it created noisy distortion in loud environments. For about $450 more, they found the Lucid Engage a lot more versatile. It offers four distinct audio configurations. Self-fitting hearing aids are more expensive, but they're a really good choice if you want your hearing aid to be more tailored to your hearing loss, or if you want options like streaming music or calls. The Lexi Lumens were among the most affordable self-fitting hearing aids they looked at. You need to set them up by taking a short hearing test. CR found very little distortion in quiet or louder environments. Another good option, they said, is the Sony CRE E10. It's pricier at $1,300. Marilyn 
Moritz, KSET 12 News. Time now, 928, 66 degrees. We'll be right back. Good morning. Welcome back. Happy weekend. Time is 931. It is Saturday, December 9th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. Good morning. Wasn't here last weekend, so congratulations to all those Longhorn fans out there. Onto the road to the playoffs. I about ready for the prediction. I still got a few weeks away. Alabama Longhorns in the national championship. Wow. I know. Rematch. I would love to see it. I mean, hey. Just saying. Sarah Spivey, I'm so sorry of about... Of course they go. They, they <laughs> talk to me about the Longhorns, and I'm an Aggie, yeah. man. Uh, it's, all right. it's all right. Okay. Hey, but I do want to mention that depending on where you live, the weather is completely different. So here's a look at the airport. You can see that at the airport, we are dealing with areas of mist, some fog. It's totally cloudy outside. Temperatures are in the mid-60s, and we've seen a couple of hundredths of an inch of that rainfall. But you look to the north and it is totally sunny in Rock Springs and in Kerrville. Temperatures are in the 50s in Rock Springs and in Kerrville. And today we are going to have a cold front move through. It's going to sweep away the humidity and by tomorrow morning it will be chilly. But as we zoom in a little bit closer, you can start to see that skies are clearing in northwestern Bear County. So areas like the Rim, Leon Springs, those areas going to be seeing some sun right now. But eventually San Antonio will be looking at that sun within the next 10 minutes. We're going to start to see some sunshine at that airport, but it's still cloudy in South Bear County within the next hour. These clouds should clear all of Bear County and the fog should dissipate too. You can see that fog has uh, totally gone away across Kerrville. It's a uh, perfect visibility up there, but in Bernie where visibility has been less than a quarter of a mile, starting to see that fog clear, still quarter of a mile visibility at the airport, but again, the skies are clearing. So here's your KSAT 12 hour forecast. We're going to be looking at clearing skies skies and a high right around 77 degrees this afternoon, but then tonight it gets windy and by tomorrow morning we've got uh, by a Monday morning. Rather, we've got to talk about our first light freeze of the season, so I'll have those details coming up. Thank you, Sarah. In your Texas headlines, the Texas Supreme Court freezing a lower court's ruling that could have allowed a woman to get an emergency abortion here in the state of Texas. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze joins us with the latest developments. Overnight, a setback for abortion rights advocates. In a first-of-its-kind case, the Texas Supreme Court temporarily blocking 31-year-old Kate Cox from obtaining an emergency abortion. Cox, a mother of two, filed the legal challenge at 20 weeks pregnant. Her doctor is saying her fetus has virtually no chance of survival. They warn continuing to carry the pregnancy could jeopardize her health and future fertility. There's no outcome here, you know, that um, results in us taking home a healthy baby girl. On Thursday, a lower court ruled in favor of Cox, granting her request for an emergency abortion despite the state's near total ban. But hours later, Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton appealed the ruling, asking the state's Supreme Court to intervene. Late Friday, it did, putting a temporary hold on the lower court's decision without regard to its merits as it reviews Paxton's appeal. Cox's lawyer is saying in a statement overnight, we are talking about urgent medical care. Kate is already 20 weeks pregnant. This is why people should not need to beg for health care in a court of law. Many of Ms. Cox's health risks during this pregnancy will put her life in danger if left untreated. Texas law bans all abortions with narrow exceptions to save the life of the mother or to prevent irreversible damage to a major bodily function. The state argues Cox does not meet the criteria. The plaintiffs have not shown that they will suffer an immediate and irreparable injury. And that was ABC's Elizabeth Schulze reporting. Speaking of reports, a new report from Forbes not showing great results for the state of Texas. So the research shows Texas is the third worst state for drunk driving in the year 2023. So here's how the research worked. All 50 states were compared across six key metrics determining which states have the highest rates of driving under the influence. Well, the data is out and it shows nearly 42% of all traffic deaths here in the Lone Star State caused by drunk drivers. And the state has the third highest rate of underage drunk drivers. And that means under the age of 21. So last month, an analysis from buyautoinsurance.com, well, added to the bad research, found Austin, El Paso, here in San Antonio, and Houston 
They're among the top five worst United States cities for drinking and driving. A Vietnam veteran from College Station, Texas, recently received an honor that was more than five decades overdue, 56 years after being ambushed and wounded while carrying out a search and destroy mission in South Vietnam. Army medic Sertinino Carpio has finally been awarded a Purple Heart. He says while 56 years is a long time, he came close to losing hope but is so thankful he didn't. As soon as I got that letter and I started reading it, I was ecstatic. You know, once I sent off that letter from Waco, I said, well, if I don't get it now, I'm just, that's going to be it. But I got it. Thank God. A local veterans group held a public ceremony this week in Bryan, Texas, to acknowledge his journey. Good morning, headlines. If you've seen the congressional hearings with the presidents of three primary universities, you know what the story is. The House Education and Workforce Committee launching an investigation into Harvard, MIT, and the University of Pennsylvania following their atrocious responses during the hearing. In a statement this week, well, Congress says the probe will have full subpoena power. Now, the congresswoman, they also called their testimony, quote, pathetic and morally bankrupt. On Tuesday, again, if you haven't seen it yet, the presidents of the three, what we like to refer to as prestigious universities, although now they're shining a different light, they were grilled by committee members over their school's responses or lack thereof to anti-Semitism on campus. They struggled to answer questions on whether calling for the genocide of Jews violated respective schools' code of conduct, and they refused to say calling the death of millions of people was bullying. And over to the presidential race, Dwayne The Rock Johnson is still considering a presidential run. He told ABC that running for office is a possibility. The Rock stepping into politics has been a discussion for years in 2021. There was a survey that found 46% of its respondents would support him as a presidential candidate. And Brownsville native, Texas Judge Irma Carrillo Ramirez confirmed as the first Latina on the U.S. Appeals Court. After being nominated by President Joe Biden, the Senate voted 80 to 12 for the North Texas Magistrate Judge to the New Orleans-based Appeals Court, which handles cases from Texas, Louisiana, and Mississippi. Congratulations. From rise to congressman to fallen diva, as they all say. I knew you were trouble when you walked in. Botox keeps you young, fillers keeps you plump. <laughs> it's hard not to chuckle. Laughing. It is impressive that you didn't start laughing. <laughs> oh, because I've seen them earlier. Okay, so former congressman George Santos is still finding ways to earn a buck. He now has a profile on Cameo. If you don't know what that is, it's a celebrity video message platform. Each video, Max, ready? $500, mm. and they're selling out quick. So there's two fun facts that the story didn't include. One, they start off as $75, and he's been so successful that he's been able to move up to $500. You no, know, he's, he's smart in the way that he is mm. leaning into his 15 minutes of fame. He's striking while the iron's hot. Yeah, he was just expelled from Congress, right. and he's already made more on Cameo. Wow. This database app than he made during his short brief stint in Congress. We need to get a cameo, Max. Yes, yeah, something like that. Time now, 939, 66 degrees. Okay, we are having the first light breeze of the season on Monday morning. Up next, I'll tell you how to care for your plants, which ones to bring in, which ones to cover, and which ones to leave alone. All right, speaking of bringing the plants in, ooh. Can't see anything from this angle. No. It is not a, a pretty start to the morning. A lot of fog out there. We're gonna check in with Sarah Spivey for a full forecast, just a few moments. It's forecast to be near freezing for at least a few hours here around San Antonio Monday morning. So Sarah, what does that mean for our plants? Here's what you need to bring inside or cover. Potted plants, succulents, tropicals, or citrus trees. Tomatoes, peppers, and fall produce should be harvested. But my celebrity tomatoes, they're not quite ready. So I'll cover them with a frost cloth sheet or a cardboard box. And as for our native perennial pollinators, that's up to you. I'm probably not gonna cover these and I'm just gonna see what ends up surviving. And if they do die back from this light freeze, don't worry, they'll pop back up come this spring. And things you don't need to worry about for this light freeze, roses, perennial shrubs, and winter veggies, like greens, onions, garlic, carrots, and winter herbs. 
just make sure to give the soil a deep watering earlier in the day. And if your plants do die back, don't worry. They're most likely just dormant and they're going to come back in the spring. Happy gardening. I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Great advice, Sarah. And again, that's for Monday morning. So not yeah. tomorrow morning, but Monday morning. So Sunday night. If you have any of those sensitive plants, bring them in. Bring them in. Yeah, I'm going to bring in some of my herbs that are in pots. Or you know what I'm doing? My zinnias are like full bloom right now. Yeah. I'm going to go and just cut them because they're not going to survive. Mm. So I'm going to cut them. I'm going to have lots of fresh flowers in the house. I have nothing sense. to add to this conversation, so please continue. <laughs> okay, well, let's talk about the weather then. There we there's go. a lot to talk about. First of all, the dense <laughs> <My> fog. <laughs> <laughs> the dense fog from this morning is clearing. We're seeing sunny skies in the hill country already. It will become windy tonight, though, with gusts up to 40 miles per hour. So today, make sure the Christmas decorations outside are uh, tied down. And then tomorrow, make sure to bring those plants in because brief light freeze is possible by Monday morning, not tomorrow morning, but Monday morning. Here's a look at the weather setup. It's snowing in Amarillo today. In fact, our friends at Transguide have showed some pictures there of uh, some snowfall west of Amarillo. Pretty impressive. There's the front. We're not going to get any snow. We're not going to get any wintry precipitation in San Antonio because drier air is moving in. So even though we expect that light freeze by Monday morning, it's going to be dry. We are not going to get any wintry precipitation precipitation, but it's muggy right now in San Antonio, but temperatures are going to be falling. We'll be looking at chilly mornings and cool afternoons right now outside. Here's that airport shot. Remember I had showed you it just 15 minutes ago. There was areas of rain. You can see the skies are clearing right now. The fog is lifting. We're getting that drier air moving in, and that is the start of uh, a, a what's going to end up being a sunny afternoon with dry conditions. So here's a look at today's temperatures and clouds. It's 58 in Kerrville and 59 in Rock Springs, but there's that clearing line. We can see it even more uh, clearly as we zoom in in northwestern Bear County. It's sunny right now from Bulverde down to Timberwood Park. There's still some areas of fog from Canyon Lake to Comfort, but those are starting to dissipate. Here's that sharp clearing line. New Braunfels, you go outside, you look up, half of the sky is cloudy, half the sky is sunny. That's the case right now across most of San Antonio and that fog is starting to lift. Visibility has been as low as zero. When I was driving into work, I could not see 30 feet in front of my car, but things are starting to clear nicely for us. So as we look at your KSAT 12 hour forecast by noon, it's going to be 75 degrees by the afternoon, mostly sunny and 77. So warm, but humidity will be low this afternoon after the foggy start and then and by this evening, temperatures will fall into the 50s. And the big thing to know this evening are the winds. Winds are going to be gusting up to 40 miles per hour. Here's how gusty it's going to be tonight. Wind gusts of up to 40 miles per hour by tomorrow morning up to 30 miles per hour. I've called this inflatable frosty. Frosty the snowman, well, he's going to be down at the North Pole or up at the North Pole unless you end up securing those uh, inflatables outside tonight. Then after the windy conditions, our attention turns to the light freeze on Monday morning. Not tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning will be in the 40s, but Monday morning will be at 32 degrees in San Antonio. It'll be 28 in Kerrville, 31 in Yavaldi, 32 in Rock Springs, probably just above freezing for Del Rio and Eagle Pass. But every location around San Antonio metro area needs to prepare for that light freeze tomorrow morning. Sarah just gave you a great example of the plants that you need to cover up or bring inside sensitive vegetation and remember your pets. I will say this. This is not going to be cold enough to have an impact on pipes, so you don't need to worry about that. Again, a light freeze. Then after the light freeze Monday, we warm up a little bit and then our rain chance is Wednesday through Friday. That's when we have a decent chance for rain in San Antonio. Still some questions as to the timing and the amount of rain, but we have some time to refine that forecast. Otherwise, it is going to be a cool week. We're going to have chilly mornings, cool afternoons, and then with cloud cover working its way in Wednesday, we'll likely see highs only near 60 degrees with that rain chance. So shaking up the forecast starting right now. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. 948, 66 degrees. Today on Texas Eats, David Elder Ooh. heads to a popular San Antonio chicken joint, serving up some specialty items inspired by and named after Texas Eats.
got all the different bites out here, including some new bites that we're gonna be talking about. But this one looks extra special. What's going on with that one? That's for you guys. It's our Texas Eats two-step. This we is a special sandwich. Just for you. Chicken on the top, chicken on the bottom, bacon, pico de gallo, cheese, jalapenos. Okay, so no bread. No bread. Just chicken. Just chicken. That's the way I like it, baby. And you got tons of bacon just pouring out the side. This is how you do it. I appreciate it, man. That's cool. Yeah, thank you. Look at the cross section on this thing. Absolutely loaded. Bacon, jalapenos, pico de gallo, chipotle, ranch. And this is available only at the new location, right? Only at the new location. The Texas Eats two-step sandwich. I'm super excited to give it a try. Cheers to Cheers. you. All right, that's the bite. Thoughts, Max? Oh Texas Eats two-step right sandwich. I'll try it. What's your problem with the sandwich? <sighs> My question is, is it a sandwich? It's a sandwich. But how, what makes it a sandwich? Don't you need bread in the sandwich? I never eat bread in my sandwich. <laughs> I don't understand. That's a fork and knife situation right there. You can get your hands uh, okay. real dirty. Okay, with the holidays coming in hot, Starbucks is offering half off drinks every Thursday mm. this month. A couple for a, excuse me, a coupon for 50% off drink will be available to reward members in the Starbucks app each Thursday. Customers are allowed one discounted drink each Thursday. Oh, but here's the, the thing. You from, need the app. Yeah, but also it's only from noon to 6 p.m. Okay. Who drinks coffee from noon to 6 p.m.? I don't go to Starbucks. No, oh, I know. I also don't I, have I'm, the app. I am a, you know, if, after, if I drink a coffee after noon, I'm up all night. I don't know how people drink coffee after dinner. I don't understand it. My parents do it. I'm like, how do you go to bed? How do you go to bed? It doesn't make sense know. to me. <laughs> all right, here we go. This is it. What is this institute? Pantone. The Pantone Color Institute. Already picking the color to describe 2024, but how do they know? Oh, here they it know. Is. It is peach. Okay. Boom. Self-proclaimed color experts. I don't know. How do you become a color expert? Neither here this nor is there. It's a big deal that they, they do this They describe every year. the hue as peaceful and serene. They call it cozy, warm, even. I don't even want it. I, I, it calms the world. I don't get it. You know, last year it was a type of like periwinkle, which mm. is my favorite color of all time. Is that purple or blue? It's, it's like a purple blue. Okay. It's the color of my front door. Okay. Remember you asked me what my favorite color was? Yeah. I was like, it's like periwinkle. Don't tell people what your front door is. I've taken They're going to show up to your house. You, I mean, whole thing. there's a lot of, I don't know, are there a lot of purple front doors in San Antonio? I mean, there's at least one. <laughs> Let's not we'll never know. <laughs> I feel like we can figure it out. All right, time now. Just about 955, 66 degrees. Hey, let's take a look outside with the roads because earlier we had quite a serious situation with a lot of crashes with the dense fog. It looks like that fog, for the most part, in most places, has Ooh. lifted. Of course, right as you say that, we see the, the right. white live cam. Right, but it looks like the traffic situation has really mm -hmm. calmed down from what it was earlier this morning. If you're out and about, please be safe. If any incidents pop up, we will let you know about them. And let's take a look at those lotto numbers. For pick three, six, two, five, fireball six, daily four, nine, one, nine, six, fireball six. Cash five, three, six, eleven, thirteen, thirty four. And Mega Millions, almost, I think it's about 400 million is the jackpot. 21, 26, 53, 66, 70, Mega Ball 13, Mega Plier 3. Good luck. A live look right now at the San Antonio Museum of Art's free holiday market. This is starting in just a few minutes and will be going on until 4 p.m. All right, so the point of the market, showcase small businesses across San Antonio. There's going to be 40 vendors, merchandise, food, drinks, and here you go. I don't even know if it's too early to talk about this. Wine tastings. Ooh, never too early. There's also going to be, <laughs> well, when you get up at 3 in the morning, there's also going to be live music. And if you need a Christmas gift, there is a chance to get brand new children's books from awesome local authors. I think this is a frozen shot that we're looking mm. at, but you get the picture. Well, here's the cool part. It's free. Again, starting so soon, goes until 4 p.m. San Antonio Museum of Art and Sarah Spivey. Is it going to be a nice day to be outside? Yeah, in fact, look, skies are clearing. Molds are low and Mountain Cedar is low in the pollen count. But here's a look at the oh, airport. Yeah. Skies are clearing. Fog is actually lifting. You can see on the horizon that the fog is literally lifting. Really cool to see that. Temperatures are in the mid-60s right now uh, in San Antonio, but they're in the 50s in the hill country. There's the clearing line moving through New Braunfels and soon through J JBSA Randolph. It'll be in the 70s today with falling humidity, so low humidity in the 
afternoon, then getting windy, gusts up to 40 miles per hour tonight into tomorrow. Make sure to secure those outdoor Christmas decorations starting off chilly tomorrow at 41, a high of 60 tomorrow during the day. But then by Monday morning, that's when I will likely see our first freeze in San Antonio. It's going to be a light freeze, no precipitation with that. Just something to consider if you have potted plants outside. Anything sensitive, that's it. That's five. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you, Sarah. Have a great rest of your day. Text seed starts right now.